If you're using Airtable to manage projects with specific dates and times, then this video is for you. We're going to be going into detail about how to use some of the more advanced features as part of the Airtable calendar application. So inside of here, we are going to be using a pro Airtable account and showing the advantage to why that calendar is more robust on the pro plan. And we're going to be connecting it directly to our Google calendar. So if that's of interest to you, let's get on into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner of Gap Consulting, where we help businesses get organized and automated with Airtable and Zapier solutions. In this video, as I mentioned, we're going to be going into detail on using the calendar application, some of the more advanced parts of it in particular with Airtable. But before we get to that, if you're new to this channel and you want to level up your Airtable game, definitely click subscribe, give this video a thumbs up. We're putting out weekly content to help you step up your Airtable game. Well, without further ado, let's jump into my screen here. So as you see, I've got a pretty simplistic base set up. Uh, real high level, what we have is a couple of different types of events. So this is just being selected from a single select dropdown. I'll show you why exactly I chose a single select dropdown for this in just a moment. And then we've got, uh, you know, a pretty intuitive start and end time on these parts or on, on each of these events, right? So it's signified by the date time field. And you'll notice that we've included a time field here as well. This is really important if you want to get hour or you know minute by minute really on your calendar. So uh, be sure to include that time field if you want to unlock that potential on both start and end. Now I threw together a couple of formulas here just so that I have an output that shows us how long each of these events is uh, scheduled for. A lot of times what you might consider doing is using something like this in your event planning to make sure that you don't do a couple of mistakes. So one of those mistakes might be setting an end time that is before a start time, uh, in which case, like, let's suppose I were to have done that uh, accidentally uh, here. Let me say, let me suppose that this was the 8th of July. You'll notice that the duration then is negative. So, uh, you know, something like that makes it pretty obvious when we've made a mistake. Let me go ahead and control Z undo that. So having having this kind of a uh, you know, reminder that's automatically calculated is really helpful because it makes sure we don't make mistakes like that. Additionally, uh, you could set up more advanced automations as well that let you know when something is not checking out just right. But the basic idea here is that we have some formulas. Uh, if you want to take a look, that's what we have here. We're doing a, a date time difference between the end and the start fields. We're presenting that in hours and then we're multiplying by 3600. And this has to do with the way that we've selected the formatting uh, appearing here in the time formatting. Uh, alternatively, you know, we could also have an output in terms of days. So if you wanted to make sure that this was the right number of days, uh, if you have, you know, projects or events that tra that transpire over multiple days, then you might uh, go with a day formula. Okay, but you know, the, the real gist of all of this is that we've got a start and end time. And the important thing again is that these are both using the date field and that the date field has that time field part of it turned on. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into what the calendar view looks like. So uh, a couple of things come up regularly when we're working with clients in the calendar. One thing is they want to see a higher level of granularity in terms of, you know, hour by hour or day by day. And that's totally possible by drilling in and zooming in on weeks. So you'll see the default view of the calendar is month, but we can drill into a two week period. And if we do that, we'll have to scroll because all of our data here is, is in the uh, week of July 8th. And uh, we can also get more granular. And when we do that, then we get a nice you know view like this where we see things actually uh, in hour blocks or even half hour blocks. We can get even more granular down to a three day if you so chose. But I think for the most part, most of our clients are pretty comfortable using just the two week view so that they see what's due this week and then also what's coming up. Okay, so once you've chosen your view, you might also notice that uh, one of the cool features that I have showing on this calendar in particular is that all of these things are color coded. And if you remember back to when I told you that each event had a single select drop down, let me go ahead, flip back to that grid view and refresh a memory. Uh, you see that this event type here is a single select. We've got four different colors, very bold colors intentionally chosen for this video. 
uh, a blue, an orange, a purple, and a yellow. So the advantage here is when we are setting up that calendar, and again, this is part of that pro plan, but when you set up that calendar, you can come in here and uh, turn what we call the color aspect of the calendar on. So by default, it looks like this. All of your records in the calendar will be just plain white. But if you were to turn the color on, you have a couple options. And you can use the select field, the event type select field that we had in the uh, previous view. And so the advantage here is these things are color coded based on the event type. So if I were to see an orange one, I know that automatically that's a scoping call. If I see a purple one, I know automatically that's a coaching session. That's how this works and it makes it really easy for you to get some uh, color coding going on in your calendar with just a click of a button. Okay, one other really cool feature when we set this calendar up, again, only on the pro plan, is that we get access to start and end dates. So you'll see that by clicking here, we can actually use a date range. Let me go ahead and set this up from scratch so that you see how simple it is. I'm going to delete this view, and now I only have that one grid view, the default view. Let me go ahead and add or create a new calendar view here. You see by default, it's going to find one of my uh, date fields and just enter it here. But because we are on the pro plan, we can also set an end date field. So we are just going to click that really quickly and easily. We can add additional date fields if we so chose. Sometimes you might have multiple date fields and you want them all mapped on the same calendar. And that would be where you would go for that. But in this case, we want to just track start and end date of all of our events. And we're using that as a range. So we're going to click done. And then again, I'm going to color and I'm selecting the field. It's literally that easy to set this up. Now, uh, what we've had many clients do at this point is stop right here and just say, this is perfect. We're going to take this calendar view and put it on display in you know, the headquarters or whatever so that uh, you know, all of the employees in the business can see um, all the things that are due on a particular day. Or alternatively, if this is a personal view for you, you might save this to you know, one of your bookmarks on your browser so that you can instantly just open this up. But if you need to start bringing this into another application, that's where this last part is going to come into play. And what we're going to be doing here is specifically using the iCal subscription link and accessing this calendar in our Google Calendar. So to get started with that, what we're going to do is we're going to share this view and we're going to click create a shareable calendar view link. Now from here, if we were to share this view with anyone, they would be able to access this calendar, see it, and, uh, and then, you know, but that's it. They can't really do anything aside from view the data or copy it out if we allow it. You also see that we have, just as with other views, uh, we have some other options here in terms of restricting access with a password, etc. We could also default to a particular um, level of granularity on this calendar. Do we want to default to two weeks, to the month, etc.? Okay, uh, we can collapse weekends, always show starting with a specific date, etc. But the really cool part about this is where we get that iCal subscription link. This is a part that's obviously unique entirely to the, uh, the calendar features and functions within Airtable. So using this iCal subscription link, we're going to go ahead and copy this. I'm just highlighting it and control C or Apple C. Now I'm going to jump into my Google Calendar. And for the sake of this video, of course, I'm going to need to uh, <laughs> delete all of this uh, or rather blur all of this out. Uh, but what I'm going to do is come down here to the, uh, to the left side. I'm going to click other calendars. I'm going to hit this plus button and I'm going to say I want to see a calendar from a URL. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just going to paste in that information that I just grabbed from the uh, Airtable iCal subscription. And I will add this calendar and it's going to take a moment to think and then I can jump back into my calendar. And now we see that we have these features that were just added from that iCal subscription link. So we have an install, the scoping call, a coaching session, an initial build out, and uh, really nicely, we can you know, quickly and easily change the color or the presentation uh, of, those, of those events. And so we can see all of those events that are pulling in from that Airtable database and overlaying that with our existing 
uh, calendar in Google Calendar. Same thing works for Outlook, same things works for a number of other applications. Now the only trick here, the only caveat, is that this doesn't exactly update in real time. So this iCal subscription link, according to Google's help page, uh, might update every 6 to 24 hours, which might not be ideal if you're needing, you know, a, an up-to-date, um, you know, constant uh, interaction with your data. In which case, there are more advanced Zapier integrations that you could build, of course, to facilitate that. But this is a really great and simple way to just get that high-level information. If an update every 12 to 24 hours is okay for you, there's no need to go any deeper and just using this iCal subscription link is going to be perfect for getting the information you need on your calendar. All right, as always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you have some business questions that you'd like to run by us, definitely swing by our website. The link will be in the description and we offer up time so that we can hop on a call with you. You can book directly there and we can set something up that works for both of us. What we'll be discussing is building a solution for you that puts all of your data in one place and gives you a nice concise dashboard so that you know what's happening in your business at all times. Additionally, we will work on building custom bespoke automation for you so that you can eliminate the time that you spend on repetitive tasks and save countless hours every week. So if that's of interest, definitely swing by our website and check out the different offers that we have there.